Good afternoon. I'm calling to order this meeting. This is a committee meeting of the Committee on Health. I'm Council Member Yvette Alexander. I represent Ward 7. I also chair the Committee on Health. Today is May the 14th, Wednesday. The time is approximately 1.05 p.m. and we are in room 500 of the John A. Wilson Building. I am pleased to be joined today by Council Member David Catania and Council Member David Grosso, both at-large members of the Council, and we do have a quorum. Um, the Department, today we are here to discuss uh, the Committee's recommendations for the FY15 budget for the Department of Health, the Department of Health Care Finance, the Department of Behavioral Health, the Deputy Mayor of Health and Human Services, and the District of Columbia Health Benefit Exchange, as well as the District of Columbia Office on Aging and the Not-for-Profit Hospital Corporation. On April 3, 2014, Mayor Vince Gray submitted to the Council of the District of Columbia a proposed operating budget and financial plan for the upcoming 2015 fiscal year. The committee held budget hearings to review the proposed budget under the agencies for the agencies under its, under its purview as following. On April 10th of 2014, the Health Benefit Exchange Authority and the Deputy Mayor of Health and Human Services. April 29th, the Department of Health Care Finance. May 1st, the Department of Health. May 5th, the Department of Behavioral Health. And May the 8th, the Not-for-Profit Hospital Corporation as well as the Office on Aging. The committee received comments from members and the public during these budget oversight roundtables, and copies of witness testimony are included in the report as attachments A through G. I've examined the mayor's FY15 budget proposal with due regard to the needs of each agency under the committee's purview, and I believe that the recommendations contained in the committee's FY15 budget report provide each agency with the funds necessary to fulfill the core mission of each agency and represent the policy priorities that best serve the District of Columbia. We will begin with the Department of Health. The Mayor's FY15 budget proposal included uh, $269,403,923 in gross operating funds from the Department of Health. The committee recommends a gross operating budget of $2,070,208,576. This reflects a $804,653 increase from the Mayor's FY15 proposal. The committee has made the following recommendations for the Department of Health's operating budget. We recommend transferring $200,000 from vacancy savings at DOH to CHA's nutrition and physical fitness program in order to, one, support clinical nutritional home delivery services for individuals living with cancer and other life-threatening diseases with an increase of $150,000 and to support initiatives that encourage corner store owners to incorporate produce in their offerings and provide nutrition education to residents in the amount of $50,000. In working with the department, we have identified $200,000 from non-personnel services with an ambulatory care service contract with CHA. These savings are a result of a transition of the model for implementation of the ambulatory care services. The final committee report will reflect this technical correction and will replace the vacancy savings with the new funds that DOH has identified. We recommend transferring $2 million in one-time funding from DOH's $5 million enhancement to support the school nurses contract with Children's Hospital to charge children, adolescent, and school health division to support teen pregnancy prevention programs. We recommend transferring $804,653 received from vacancy savings identified by the department 
of behavioral health to CHA in order to support teen peer educators who work to provide sexual health information and condoms to our youth. This will be done with the 100,000 increase to CHA's Children, Adolescent, and School Health Division and increase the funding of CHA's cancer and chronic, dis chronic um, illness prevention efforts. Due to the source of these additional funds, $504,653 of the 704,653 will um, be reoccurring. Because these priorities are so important, I recommend removing nine FTE positions that have yet to be filled now for more than halfway through this fiscal year for a total of $504,653. Unfortunately, the agents, the agency CFO refuses to certify the deletion of these FTEs. As such, only 300,000 will come from the Department of Behavioral Health to support these two initiatives. This will result in teen peer educators receiving 100,000 and chronic disease prevention program receiving $200,000. Um, for the policy recommendations, the committee rep recommends the inclusion of the Budget Support Act, Act language that requires DOH to submit the following uh, to the Council by October 1st of 2014. A quarterly report on all grants administered by the Department of Health. This will include information such as the purpose of the grant, the source of its funding, the date of expiration, and the employees responsible for overseeing the grant. It shall also include information on federal grants for human services that have been cut and that will affect funding for three or more community organizations that have a history of providing service in the district. Secondly, a biannual report on how existing district teen pregnancy programs are being evaluated. The report should include information regarding the rate of teen pregnancy in the community served, the number of girls served, girls and boys served, I should say, how many girls successfully completed the program, any other information critical to determining the success of the program. Number three, a biannual um, regarding the efficiency of, medical, of the medical marijuana program in the district, including the names and individuals in charge of processing applications, the average wait time for processing applications, as well as any other information critical to analyzing the efficiency of the program. Finally, the committee also recommends the inclusion of the Budget Support Act language that establishes a teen pregnancy prevention fund and creates authority for a subgrantee to administer grants through that fund. For the capital budget, there are no recommendations for DOH as they have not been allotted in capital they have not been allotted cap capital dollars uh, for FY15. The Department of Health Care Finance. The mayor's FY15 budget proposal included authority for uh, 2,913,000 um, 649 in gross operating funds and 20.4 full time equ equivalents uh, to health care finance. The committee recommends a gross operating budget of two point, approximately 2.9 million billion. This reflects a decrease and 3,300,000 from the mayor's FY15 proposal. Due to the local savings identified in provider payments in the amount of $1 million and the corresponding reduction of the 70% federal match in the amount of $2.3 million. The committee rec recommends diverting these funds to the Office on Aging to assist chronically underfunded organizations that provide affordable housing, home care, and other services for older District of Columbia residents. For capital budget recommendations, uh, during the Committee on Health's round of FY15 budget hearings, I asked both 
health care finance, and the not-for-profit hospital corporation a number of questions regarding the $35,876 allocated for it within the FY15 capital budget. While health care finance provided one set of answers during the hearing, United Medical Center provided another set several days later. During this hearing, I was not impressed with the fact that I was unable to obtain a clear and consistent set of answers regarding how nearly $36 million would be spent. The answers received from both healthcare finance and the not-for-profit hospital corporation have led me to believe that while a new hospital may be the route to take, this is not the way to get there. A lack of clarity has given the committee the confidence, a lack of committee has not given the committee confidence it needs to approve the full capital funding for FY15. The not-for-profit hospital has explained that in FY15 it will need $59,576,000 in capital needs. 23,499,17 has been dedicated to the new hospital development. Because the committee does not feel confident with the answers given regarding these new funds, it cannot lend its support to the developers of the new hospital. As such, the committee is recommending that 22,200,000 in capital funding be allocated for the not for profit hospital corporation be redirected as follows uh, four point seven five million to um, of capital to the Washington Humane Society so that it may receive an updated animal shelter that will replace its two outdated uh, rundown locations five million dollars to the WTEF foundation so that it can repair the on-site arena for over 50 years in need of repair, and that's, I'm sorry, the Washington Tennis and Education Foundation. $1.5 million to the Therapeutic Recreational Center for upgrades. $1.2 million to the Nanny Helen Burroughs Housing Development, which is um, a new communities replacement housing project. 250000 to the Kelly Miller um, middle School for restoration of debilitated courts and a new drainage system. 250000 to the DC PNI, the DC Promise Neighborhood Initiative. $1 million to the Hillcrest Recreation Center for improvements to the fitness center. $5 million for an application only school located in Ward 7, an application only middle school located in Ward 7. Three million dollars for Fort Davis Recreational Center to improvements for its athletic and fitness facilities. The Policy and Budget Support Act recommendations are one, an evaluation, a reevaluation of the Alliance recertification process and preparation of a report for council review. Reports on its enhanced EPSDT coding initiative and provider compliance, a submission of a comprehensive plan for greater coordination of care and reduction of emergency and acute care utilization in the managed care fee-for-service populations, continued reporting on enrollment trends and utilization of the personal care personal care assistant benefit, continued reporting on the EPD waiver program updates and enrollment, continued reporting on managed care organization performance and enrollment, exploration of an alternative structure for eligibility and enrollment in the EPD waiver program, and regular reports on the status and repairs of the program for the Department of Behavioral Health. The Mayor's FY15 budget proposal included $277,636,072 in gross operating funds. The Mayor's proposal also included authority for 1,321 
full-time equivalents. The committee recommends decreasing this by 300000 due to the vacancy savings that have been identified. As such, the committee rep recommends an operating budget of 277336 and 72 with 1,321 full-time employees. As mentioned earlier, the final committee report will reflect these updated changes. For the policy recommendations, the committee recommends that the Department of Behavioral Health reanalyze its inter-exit procedures for St. Elizabeth's Hospital and do an evaluation of the companies contracted to operate the points of entry at the hospital in light of the re recent occurrences at the hospital. Additionally, the committee also recommends that the department that the department analyzes employee grievance procedures during its budget hearing. The committee was approached by an employee who shared experiences at the department, specifically at St. Elizabeth's, and we want to ensure that the proper attention is given not only to patients but those individuals who care for them. There are no capital budget recommendations. Um, the Office on Aging. The Mayor's FY15 budget proposal included $42,017,960 in gross operating funds for the agency, for the office. Uh, the committee has increased this by $1 million in order to support the service network providers who provide critical services to the population served by the office. These services include residential facilities, counseling legal services, and recreation activities for D.C. senior residents. As such, the committee proposes an operating budget of $43,017,960. There are no capital um, or policy recommendations for the office. The Department of the, the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services uh, the mayor's FY15 budget proposal included $1,171,975 in gross operating funds for the um, department, and the committee endorses this proposal. There are no capital budget or policy recommendations. And for the not-for-profit hospital corporation, the mayor's FY15 budget proposal included $112 million in gross operating funds um, for the Department of um, the Deputy Mayor of Health and Human Services. The committee endorses this proposal. Um, for policy recommendations, the committee recommends the, commended, the continued use of the Budget Support Act language that requires uh, the not-for-profit hospital to submit a bi-monthly report to the council regarding the work and progress made by the Huron Healthcare. For the health benefit exchange, the mayor's proposed FY15 budget proposal included $28,751,244 in gross operating funds for the exchange with 54 full-time employees. The committee recommends no changes to the mayor's proposed operating budget for the exchange. There are no capital budget recommendations. Um, the Policy and Budget Support Act recommendations are as follows. Authorizing the Insurance Regulatory Trust Fund Bureau to review and assess the health benefit exchanges, authorities, expenditures, and proposed budget and financial plan in advance of the submission to the Council. Amendments clarifying that certain assessments on health carriers are to be construed as a state tax for purposes of certain provisions of the Affordable Care Act and implementing regulations, requiring the authority to submit data pertaining to the uninsured populations in the district, and comprehensive recommendations on outreach and enrollment, requiring the authority to prepare an assessment of the in-person assister program and recommendation for additional resources to the continuation of the program in future years, 
policy recommendations that the authority work closely with the Economic Security Administration to improve the eligibility and enrollment policies and policy recommendation to explore the possibility of moving the collection of the health benefit exchanges assessment on carriers closer to the start of the fiscal year in which it is to fund. At this time, I would like to acknowledge that we've been joined by at-large member, Council Member Anita Bonds, and I would like to open up the floor for any discussion. Council Member. Uh, Madam Chair, could you also mark me as president? Oh, and I would also like to acknowledge that we have a full presence of the committee at large, Council Member Vincent Orange as well. Chairman. Thank you. Council uh, Member Grasso. Yes, thank you. Uh, first, I want to uh, commend you and your staff for the work that you've done on this report. Um, I think it is uh, well done, and I appreciate the effort that's been put in. I have a few questions, uh, but first I want to point out just some of the work that you've done that I think is commendable. First, I think the... Um, money that you've put in for the wildlife uh, city wildlife center and also for the humane society are important i noticed in the report that the uh, humane society was uh, five million but in your statement you mentioned it was a little less than that and i'm wondering what the discrepancy is and uh, i'm just curious why that got changed between the report uh, being distributed now and and your uh, comments yeah, for the it had to be converted to PAYGO dollars, and we only were able to locate four point seven five million. So you couldn't take the capital dollars that were you were going to move from the hospital. You had to reduce that reduct that. Is that correct? And you found PAYGO money separate to do that. That's correct. Well, okay. Um, did you get an opinion on that from somebody? Because I'd love to see that. Uh, from just the curiosity, office. yeah, I'd love to see it. Office. I'd love to see the analysis on that and why it had to be PAYGO as opposed to the transfer of the money from the new hospital. Um, obviously, I, I'm supportive, and, and I well, appreciate because it. that is not um, government government owned, so that was the reason why we had to convert that. Well, I'll just note for the record that I mean, I, I think um, you know, there's some debate as to whether or not this is or isn't government owned, and we can discuss that as we move forward. Uh, but I'd still love to see the uh, written opinion on that. I'd also like to thank you for the transfer of money for the Therapeutic Rec Center. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that we have to put this money in uh, to renovate the Rec Center. As you know, it's on G Street uh, in the Northeast. And, and make sure that the people that take advantage of that in our city have the opportunity to do it in a modernized uh, center. And um, I believe that this will get us a part of the way there, and I think that there's other committees that are pitching in as well, and I really appreciate that as it being one of the, my top priorities this budget session. I also appreciate the fact that you've increased the Community Health Administration's budget for team peer educators. As you know, that's a huge uh, benefit to our city, and I was um, astonished that it wasn't uh, increased or uh, very well included in the budget sent over from the mayor. A few of the BSA language, the budget support as language uh, aspects I'd like to also commend you on. The first, I'd like to thank you for including the Department of Health reporting requirements on their grants. Um, I, that is an extremely important uh, effort around transparency in the budget, and I find it, uh, uh, I, I know we'll find it to be very useful in the budget process next year. I also want to thank you for your leadership on the health benefit exchange for the past year. You've done, I think, an outstanding job uh, monitoring the rollout of the exchange and worked hard to make sure that it is uh, going to be done with the best interest of the District of Columbia in mind. And to that end, I commend you for the language you've included in this particular Budget Support Act, um, establishing the authority for the Insurance Regulatory Trust Fund Bureau to review and then assess what exchange expenditures are, are appropriate um, before they can assess fees. And I, I think that's the best pattern to go, and I support you fully on that effort. I hope that we move forward, we can retain this as the proper measurement. I know for the funding of the D District of Columbia Insurance and Securities Bureau, we have, um, we have a cap there as well. Um, I think it's at 2%, but I might be wrong. But they review the, the Regulatory Trust Fund Bureau, reviews the assessments, and then also there's a cap. They never get close to it, as you know. Uh, but it is, I think, a really smart way to do this. I also want to commend you for the reporting on the efficacy of teen pregnancy funds. You know that that's something that we are looking at closely in the committee. Um, and uh, finally, I just want to say that I wish we could have been able to increase the Department of Aging 
to meet the $3 million that's needed to continue the critical programs that they have there. Um, but perhaps we can find that funding as we move forward in the Committee of the Whole. Uh, and with that, I just want to commend you again for the work that you've done on this budget and look forward to supporting you today. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Grasso. And for the record, I want to state that you have been at every hearing uh, with me, and I truly appreciate all of your input and feedback. So thank you for your leadership as well. Councilmember Catania? Oh, you didn't? Is there any other discussion? Councilmember Bond? Yes. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I really want to commend you for a number of things that you've done in this budget. I think it's outstanding. And particularly, I'm interested in the monies that we're putting into the Children, Adolescent, and School Health Division to support our teen peers, educators. And I think that we are moving in the right direction. Um, you have a number of items in, the, in your, your plan here that I certainly support wholeheartedly but I just wanted to speak out about anything that relates to our young people because we find that that is the group that really needs our attention um, now and also thank you very much for the fund that you established for the teen pregnancy prevention <clears throat> thank you councilmember bonds let me just state that the young people not only testified at the hearing they also met in my office afterwards so they're doing a great job and I would truly I believe that um, the 100,000 will fund um, over a hundred is that correct over a hundred teen peer educators throughout District of Columbia Public Schools so that's great they receive a stipend um, for four hours a week in their school so that makes a great difference thank you Councilmember Orange. Uh, Councilmember Alexander, uh, Madam Chair, just want to thank you for the fine work that you've done here. And you certainly have uh, indicated and shown that you can handle billions of dollars. And so congratulations. And I'm ready to vote. Thank you. And if there's no more discussion. Uh, Madam Chair. Councilmember Catan. Uh, Madam Chair, I want to uh, echo the sentiments of the members of the committee and express appreciation to you and your staff for the work that you've done. I have a, an appreciation for what it's like to chair this committee and how uh, challenging it can be to meet the competing interests with limited dollars. And so it's uh, absolutely a difficult task because there is so much need. I'm really grateful for the increases to the school uh, health nursing program. Um, I think it is, it goes without saying, you know, it is central to um, parents having peace of mind when their kids are in school, but more importantly, it's central to our efforts to expand uh, uh, capacity for special needs children. There, there, there really has to be a medical professional in many instances on the scene uh, and on the site in order for us to have inclusionary uh, opportunities or inclusion opportunities, so thank you for that. Um, Madam Chair, I have an amendment that, that um, my staff will circulate, uh, and this goes to the United Medical Center capital expenditure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairman, I don't think I need to, uh, to echo my commitment to United Medical Center. Uh, over the years chairing this committee, uh, many people credit the work of the committee during my tenure as having saved the committee. And while chairman of the committee, I oversaw the investment of well in excess of $100 million in capital and operating dollars to help the facility get back on its feet, double its number of employees, expand services, and a whole host of, of ways. I am a, an enthusiastic supporter of the hospital. Uh, and at the same time, I want to make sure we're wise stewards of capital funds and that we're meeting the needs uh, you know, that we know to, to in fact exist. Um, Madam Chairman, you have yourself uh, had a reduction uh, in the amount of uh, proposed capital funds for FY15. And my amendment would ask that we reduce the amount in 16 and 17 by 20 million each year. So rather than have a $335 million capital uh, commitment in the absence of a budget, which tells us how much this new hospital will be, and when comparing the costs of new facilities in other parts of the country, uh, that does seem to be quite a high price tag. Many of us recall how much it costs to build uh, the uh, hospital on Washington Circle for George Washington University, albeit a decade or so more uh, ago. Um, but, Madam Chairman, if, I can per if I'm permitted, I'd like to uh, move the amendment and explain what the amendment would do. It would reduce, not eliminate, uh, the capital funds for the new United Medical Center. Uh, there would be $281 million remaining. It would reduce the amount um, by $40 million, $20 million in FY16 and $20 million in FY17. 
And Madam Chairman, the reason this is important, these were funds that were in part taken from the health, uh, the education cluster to fund the, the, uh, the hospital. And we have some very, very significant pressing needs at the moment for capital. Um, if these funds are made available and sent to the Committee on Education, I'd like to be clear as to how the, the, I would recommend that the funds be spent. Um, immediately for FY16, I would like to move Brown Educational Campus up from, 2000 and from, from the year 2019 uh, to 2016. It is critical that Brown receive a renovation sooner rather than later, and here is why. Uh, we have accessed uh, Young, uh, which is the school that adjoins Brown to Two Rivers, which is an excellent Capitol Hill charter school with a, if I'm not mistaken, the longest waiting list in the city of somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 kids. If in the absence of renovating Brown, while we are, while we will soon see a newly renovated, and I'm excited to see a newly renovated uh, Two Rivers next to Brown, uh, we will put the Brown Educational Campus in a position where it simply will not be able to compete on fair footing with Two Rivers. And so by accelerating that capital investment into Ward 5, uh, we will have two excellent newly renovated schools that will serve that community and be able to compete on a fair footing. Um, the $20 million for FY17, uh, Madam Chairman, would allow for the renovation of Johnson Middle School, again another school that is postponed to 2019. So accelerating that investment is absolutely critical because Brown is suffering from uh, from, from a facility that candidly uh, is underwhelming, to put it mildly. Brown is in a very particular position of competing. I'm sorry, not Brown, but, but uh, Johnson is in a very particular position of competing with the KIPP uh, campus on uh, Douglas. And in the absence of having you know, a similarly situated quality facility, we continue to see exodus from Johnson to um, KIPP. Now, again, I want both systems to be equally situated, but Madam Chairman, let me explain why it is so important. The entire ecosystem of our feeder systems require that there be quality facilities along the feeder system. You know, two, two schools in particular, one yesterday where I was, uh, Moton, is a great example where we have a dynamic principal trying to do her best to bring children back to Moton. But when the parents are making choices, they're looking at elementary, middle, and high schools. And so they're looking at their competitor is KIPP, a newly renovated or newishly renovated facility, not a word. And then they're looking at the feeder system offered by Moton. And it goes Moton, which has been beautifully renovated, but then it goes to Johnson, which is not renovated. And so parents are looking for elementary and middle school options. Madam Chair, I want to accelerate the the renovation of Johnson uh, because it is important, not just for the Moton community, but the MLK community, um, elementary school, and for uh, Turner and for Garfield. Um, Madam Chairman, it would also, and I'll be quick, by virtue of this acceleration of funds, we would be able to adjust additional renovations at Raymond and West. Uh, and C.W. Harris, which I think is a school that you are familiar with considering it is located in your ward. There is a ripple effect of the $40 million alt, uh, uh, alt, alter, alt, uh, altering of the budget uh, that would have the, the following effect. An additional $43.9 million in investment in Ward 4 schools, $23.6 million in Ward 5, $12.6 in Ward 7, and $22.8 in Ward 8. The accelerations of massive amounts of renovations so that our schools are on an equal footing with their competing schools. So, Madam Chair, I would I know that this is not necessarily an easy amendment for some, but I would ask that they support it because there's certainty that these dollars will go to improve schools where the money uh, candidly was carved out in part to make way for this United Medical Center expansion. So I move the amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will not be supporting this amendment. I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, in the FY15 budget, you did mention C.W. Harris. The mayor has allocated a $12.7 um, million dollar renovation um, for school moder modernization for C.W. Harris. Uh, and you also mentioned Brown Educational Campus in Ward 5. I have talked to Councilmember McDuffie. And um, to the best of my knowledge, he has explained that Spingarn is scheduled for um, renovation or for 
uh, modernization for FY15, he wants to move that to 17 and move Brown uh, to FY15. And this is becoming the education committee hearing. But actually, he wants to move that um, to replace the Spangarn renovation for that. And the overall issue um, where we're getting this money from, the discussion would be from the United Medical Center, the proposal for the new hospital. While I do not support the capital dollars for the new development, as I explained, that was not sufficiently, uh, that was not sufficiently um, explained to the use of that money. I want to say that I do fully support a new hospital eventually being built. So that was proposed to be built at the $300 million mark. And I don't want to take away from that $300 million in out years um, because I wholeheartedly support a new hospital once a partner is in place, once a development plan is in place, I, I do support that. Yeah, and the more we chip away at that $300 um, million, then the less our hopes um, become of actually a new hospital coming to fruition. So uh, I, I do applaud your effort and I do applaud you um, as the chairman of the health committee, but at this time, I cannot support um, that proposal specifically um, where the money is proposed to be taken and specifically after talking to um, the council members um, in which these schools are located in their wards. Um, this plan was not, um, this plan was not given my attention that you are proposing at this time. If, if I might, Madam Chair, so just so we're clear in the FY18 and 19 to make way for the United Medical Center, uh, $142 million was taken out of the CIP for schools. Uh, that means a whole lot of school promises and renovations promised that will not be made. That's a lot of money. Uh, so what we're asking for is essentially 40 million uh, of the 142 that yeah, was. And, and I was not aware um, that that money was taken out of the schools. What was that specifically? May, may I, taken if I, out? if I can continue just for a second, uh, Madam Chair. So the issue of whether or not we can simply swap Spingarn money for Brown. Uh, that was discussed with, uh, I discussed that with Councilmember McDuffie. I explained that in the process of trying to keep other promises that were postponed because promises have been made as part of the CIP, which were broken, including for or elementary, um, you know, that was once again, um, uh, you know, essentially postponed f to another date. Uh, Marie Reed was postponed to another date. And what Marie Reed and Orr and Lafayette all have in common is these are open floor plan schools, one in Ward 1, one in Ward 4, and one in Ward 8, where the instructional experts, you know, are constantly struggling with these open floor plans on how to properly educate. I think it's important that we keep our promises that were made in the past, that we take these funds, we expend them for this very important uh, educational purpose. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate that Mr. Um, McDuffie is willing to, to be flexible with respect to Spingarn, um, but those funds were used uh, to keep promises that were already broken. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I don't uh, I have any objections to improving and providing capital improvements to United Medical Center, but what I find interesting is why we would be in a position and who, who is really beating, I mean, who is really the driving force behind changing the location of the hospital to St. Elizabeth's and spending, you know, 300 plus million dollars. And I wonder how much sense that makes considering we just invested 100 million in improving the capital of that very site. An entirely new elevator system, entirely new shell that is environmentally superior to what we had, a new roof, new boiler, new chillers, etc. Having invested 100 million there and then to go invest 300 over here, I don't think that's the best bang for our buck when we are breaking promises to parents on improving schools. So I appreciate you won't support the amendment, but I wanted to put on the record why I think it's important. And I, Thank I, and you, Councilmember Catania, and, and I applaud you um, as you chair the Committee on Health, and we also invested millions of dollars at that point, um, too, with UMC. So we're going to continue to do so until we can get the new hospital underway. I would like to call for a vote. I'm sorry, I just called may for I, a vote. May I comment on this? I just called for an, a vote a vote on this amendment. We didn't in discussion. I, we didn't in discussion. 
Councilmember Grasso. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to also make the argument that I think this is, um, you know, as you put in your report, I, I do not think that the uh, not-for-profit hospital center is at the point where they are prepared to spend the $90 million or even the um, in FY16, just like you said, they weren't ready in FY15 to spend the full amount. I think we're in the same situation. I think the first thing to note is that we do need a hospital that's highly functioning and high quality east of the river, and I think that's where we need to commit to the UMC campus to put another $300 million into a brand new hospital is certainly not something that I've supported, and I've stated that on the record before. I do support complying with Huron's plan, which they submitted to this council uh, officially, which asks for, if I remember correctly, $155, $160 million. So for me, um, to move up some of the schools to a higher priority, um, especially in the way that the uh, chairman of the Committee on Education has pointed out, by simply removing $20 million over the next two years um, out of the new hospital plan makes sense to me. And I think it also answers your questions. I don't, I don't think it will delay it. I don't think it will postpone the future of having the, the quality hospital in um, the community that we most need it east of the river. And so um, I would like to argue that, that this is actually the best step forward um, and that it would be appropriate for the committee to um, support Councilmember Catania's amendment and move forward with allowing these schools to be renovated, um, especially the ones they mentioned. I also spoke with Councilmember McDuffie, and I think that the uh, Brown Education Campus is long overdue for renovation and for investment, and it's something that we can all be, you know, really get behind um, with this first step today here in this committee. Um, so I will be supporting this amendment. Thank you. Is there any further discussion, Councilmember Orange? Uh, Madam Chair, I will be voting no against this amendment. And let me say, I think here we go again. I supported the National Capital Medical Center during the Williams administration. And at that time, the price tag was $400 million. And we thought we were well on our way to finally getting a state-of-the-art hospital east of the river that everyone can be proud of and partner with Howard University at the time. And I believe uh, we were going to put up $200 million, and the federal government was going to put up $200 million as of some equation. And at the last minute, we all think that this is going to happen, the rug got pulled out from under that project. And now here we are, years later, going back saying we need to build this hospital. Just, just think if we would have stuck to it at that point and provided this east of the river. And so I'm, I'm not with this ch chopping away at the front. I support a state-of-the-art medical center east of the river. And I do not believe that this $300 million is enough. If the price tag was $400 million way back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and to think that you can get it cheaper today, I, I just think that's preposterous. And I think that once and for all, we need to have a state-of-the-art medical center east of the river. Now, I, fortunately, I, I live over in Ward 5, right down the street is Providence Hospital. I got the uh, 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 MedStar right down, down the street, less than a mile, Howard University. And then the others have Georgetown uh, Hospital. You got Sibley Hospital. But just think if there was a major disaster in this town and you could not get from east of the river, I mean, and then to not have a quality medical center, for at almost 50% of your population, I think is ridiculous. So I'm going to vote this. Uh, uh, I'm going to vote against this amendment, and I would hope that you and others on this committee will stay the course, and let's once and for all build an East End Medical Center that's worthy of being east of the river and provide the citizens of the east of the river the same medical opportunities that others enjoy in other locations around the city. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council Member Orange. And I want to state I wasn't a council member at the time, but I was with the citizens for the National Capital Medical Center when I gave you a green baseball cap for your birthday. You remember that? It was orange. I'm orange, I'm sorry. Yes. Orange. An orange baseball cap with a W. <laughs> I'm thinking green now. I don't know where that comes from. But thank you. And I move to vote on the amendment. All in favor, say aye. All opposed? Opposed? 
please, please record me as I. And record me as Bernie and I as well. I'm, I'm sorry, Council Member Grosso, you're in favor of? Yes, of this amendment, yes. Thank you. As I. And the no's have it. And now we will move. Um, I move the committee report with leave for staff to make technical and editorial, editorial and conforming changes to reflect the actions of the committee today. All in favor, say aye. All opposed? That's unanimous. This concludes the business of the Committee on Health. The time is approximately 1.55 p.m. and we are adjourned. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we're adjourned now. I want to thank my committee staff. I'm sorry. I always forget. Um, they work tirelessly. Raina Smith, my committee director, Melanie Williamson, my legislative counsel, and Ronald King, senior policy advisor. Thank you all. Now we're adjourned.